Hey guys, and welcome back to... Wait a minute, what game is this? I think we've seen this before, it looks somewhat familiar. Yes, this is Skies of Arcadia Legends. Now, I know we finished off the LP of this quite some time ago, uh, but we're actually going to come back now because we've got a couple of optional bosses and hidden secrets to explore, so it should be fun. Now, before we dive into this, we're going to take a look at our party makeup. You can see here that we're actually much higher level than we were before. Uh, we're in our low 60s, and we also have Drachma with us, who unfortunately is lagging quite a bit behind, but he'll be alright. You can see he's got a lot of health. He'll be fine. So we've got Drachma with us. Uh, we're going to be using a slightly different strategy for this first optional boss, so uh, that should be pretty fun. And without any further ado, let's get to it. Now, you can obviously tell he's going to be inside of the Dark Rift. And it's probably a better idea to uh, come at it from the Yafutomen side, uh, because you only have to go through this one little tunnel and then the guy will actually be in the room right after this. Otherwise, you'd have to go through the entire Dark Rift area again, which could be a little bit of a pain. So, it's probably better to just come through this way. Then once we exit into this room, we'll be able to see as we turn a little bit here, uh, there's actually this giant black looper here in this room, so never seen one of these before. Let's go ahead and uh, walk up to it, or fly up to it, and check it out. You can see we'll enter a battle. And now this isn't a ship battle, despite how big it may look on the map. It's actually just a regular old looper, but uh, if we check it out, we can see it's named Elshin. So, yes, this is our first optional boss. Now, this guy is available, I think, kind of once, like, Soltis rises, maybe? I don't actually remember off the top of my head, like, what the trigger is, but uh, he's pretty good for experience, so if you can actually go back out and fight him again and again and get some pretty good experience from it, so uh, might be worth keeping in mind. Now, the strategy we're going to use is going to use a couple of moves that we haven't seen before. First off, we're going to be using Skull Shield with Vice. And uh, this is an attack, as we can see by the description here. It defends and counterattacks. Basically makes you immune to just regular old physical attacks. So we're going to use that. We're also going to be using our old standby Delta Shield to counter this guy's spells. Fina's going to focus, and Drachma is going to be using his Spirit Charge move. And uh, this will double his Spirit Points and defend against attacks. So it's very helpful. Let's go ahead and use it. Pirates of old! their skull shield pretty cool animation we can skip by delta shield real quick and drachma should be up next so you can see that gets us a whole heap of spirit points there and uh, basically the strategy that we're using here is to kind of just turtle for a bit uh, all that elshin can do is either spells like pyrie or slipara uh, and i think he also has sac race which isn't damaging anyway so who really cares but um, he can either do that or just a regular plain old physical attack. So between Skull Shield and Delta Shield, he literally cannot harm us in any way. Also, one thing worth doing is to actually equip the black map here because Elshin is a looper and he will run away if threatened too much. So we make sure to get that one on so he actually can't escape. Now we use our Skull Shield, we use our Delta Shield, we focus, and we Spirit Charge. And with that, there's really not too much to worry about. The only thing that's a little bit annoying is that Elshin's regular attacks can cause fatigue, and oftentimes do. So you'll have to be kind of on top of curing that if you want to keep your SP up. But other than that, there's nothing to worry about at all. This, can, this strategy works for basically any level as long as you have the right uh, skills available to you. So you can see we're already racking up the spirit points quite a lot here. So we can just keep this up until we get to max and then pull off a prophecy. Just make sure not to accidentally select the wrong thing at some point. Alright, so unfortunately he hasn't done his regular attack. I kind of want him to, so you can see the Skull Shield animation, but... Um, oh well, I guess I'll take this too, because it means we're getting quite a lot of spirit. Oh, 69 of 70. We're one away from being able to use Prophecy. That's too bad. Alright, here's his regular attack. And you can see that gets cancelled out with Skull Shield and then a counter-attack as well, so that's pretty handy. Unfortunately for most of the game, that's not really that useful, especially against bosses because most of them have some sort of special skill that they use, which uh, Skull Shield does not protect you against at all, so that kind of limits its use a bit, but it's actually very nice here. So let's go ahead and get off of Prophecy.
And as you can see, that is a fairly high amount of damage, especially with our party levels being as high as they are. Now, once you damage Elshin for the first time, I believe, he will start actively trying to run away. So, uh, we don't quite have enough for a Pirate's Wrath yet, but again, we have the black map to keep him here, so that doesn't really matter. So, we'll basically just turtle one more turn, and then we should be able to get him with a Pirate's Wrath. So, uh, he can also heal with Sack Race at this point, but it only does a thousand, so there's really nothing to worry about. Okay, looks like he's going to try to attack Drachma there, and again, it's blocked, so he's doing absolutely no damage. It's awesome. So we should be able to finish it up on this turn. I'm not too concerned about taking any damage, because no one's going to die in one hit here. So we can just use a Pirate's Wrath, we'll have Aka use a Delta Shield, and we'll just guard. And basically, I just threw up the Delta Shield so uh, Vice doesn't get like put to sleep. And see, there he's trying to run, so there's a good idea to bring out the black map. And there we go. So, yeah, that didn't do too much damage. He wasn't really, um, like, beefed up or anything, but it was enough to take him down, so that's really all that matters. And as you can see, you get a pretty good amount of experience, 7,500. You also get 15,000 gold, and that's enough to level up uh, three of our party members, even at as high a level as we are. So you can fight this guy over and over, and once you get stronger, you don't really have to use that super safe strategy, and uh, that'll help speed it up a little bit too. All right, so now that we are done with him, we can uh, exit the Dark Rift and make our way to our next secret. All right, so while we're on the way there, I figure we can go ahead and explain what the things are we're gonna be checking next. So, in this game, there is a set of secrets called the Three Secrets, and they have pretty lofty requirements to actually unlock within the game. First off, you have to do basically all of the requirements for Vice the Legend. I don't think you need a 100% uh, treasure find in order to actually do that, but um, I think it's at least 90%, so you do need to have found most of them. You also have to get into, uh, you have to fight and defeat 2,500 regular enemies as well as 12 non-story ship battles in order to unlock this stuff. So that's why my levels are so high. I basically went into the Looper region and uh, just fought those things over and over. So once you've uh, cleared all of those requirements, these three secrets will unlock. One is a discovery, one is a new weapon, and one is an optional boss. So an easy way to check it is there's this guy uh, in the Hamachu Island, I believe it's called. Yeah, uh, you can check with him and he'll tell you stats on how many enemies you've defeated and stuff like that. So now that we have reached where we want to reach, first we're going to take care of the Discovery. Uh, it turns out if we kind of check along this little mountain range here at the highest peak, we can find the Golden Hamachu, and this is the first of the three secrets. It's a bird-like, unknown creature, shining gold. It's a hybrid between a hamachu and an ancient animal. Details are still unknown. If you're lucky enough to see the rare bird, your wish will be fulfilled. Well, that's good. So unfortunately, the golden hamachu, while it is a discovery in some sense, it's not in others. Because if you check the journal here, there's no... There's the moon hamachu, which we got from the uh, moonfish. But, you know, apart from that, he doesn't show up here, and you can't sell his information at a store. So it's just kind of there to find, I guess, just kind of a neat little thing to see. So for the next of our secrets, we're actually going to stop by the nearby Sailor's Island. Uh, basically, all we're going to be looking for is the Mystery Merchant, which, as you know, uh, can show up at the end here. So this is the closest place to do it. All right, so it looks like he's here on the first try. So <laughs> sometimes he's not, and you have to kind of go out and back into the island. It's a little annoying. But we can talk to the Mystery Merchant, he doesn't really say anything different than what he would say before. But if we go into his uh, buy list, you can see he now has the Sky Fang, which, believe it or not, is more powerful than our Vorlik Blade that Ryu Khan forged for us. By quite a bit, actually. That 55 is no small number. So you can see in the description, this is the ultimate sword. It can split the heavens. That's pretty awesome. So we're definitely going to buy one of those. And it's only 50,000, so it's actually very affordable, too. So now that, there we go, that's the second of the three secrets. They're not big, but the third one is much, much bigger. Uh, like I said before, the final one is an optional boss, and that one will be a lot cooler. And uh, we'll also be able to use that battle to see the cool Sky Fang weapon. It actually looks really neat, so I'm pretty excited about that. So now let's leave Sailor's Island and get ready for our final encounter. 
All right, and for the final of the three secrets, we are going to head back home to Crescent Isle. And you can see, once we uh, kind of dock here and press A, we'll actually get an option. We can now also fight the special air pirate. So yes, this is going to be our third secret, the optional boss, the special air pirate. Let's check it out. So yeah, this is, they kind of have to make this so you can do this at just about any part in the story. So even though we are pretty much leaving for the final battle here, it's like, well, all right, we're home. Let's relax. It's all kind of, <laughs> all kind of, you know, high spirited and everything. So then we hear a vaguely familiar voice and you can probably tell by that uh, punctuation and all that, that you can guess who this is. So it sounds like there's someone on the deck and apparently knows Aka. That crude voice, that musky spell. Yes, you all know who it is. Yep, yeah, we've recognized that text anywhere. This is Vigoro. So he's now calling Vice out on the deck. It looks like he's changed his ways a bit and also his outfit. Uh, since he's been, uh, I guess he ditched the Valuan Armada, he's going to explain to us a little bit about what he's doing here. And of course, uh, <laughs> Aika has been feeling nauseous all day. She just knew it was going to happen. So since the last time we met, Vigoro has uh, abandoned the Valuan Armada and become an air pirate, searched the world for the strongest sailors he could find and pick fights with them. Fight after fight, he emerged victorious, and he's stronger than ever. So now he's coming back and finally going to defeat Vice. He's, we fought him a number of times throughout the game, and now he wants to fight again. <laughs> and he did everything the proper air pirate way. Boarded our ship, and now he's challenging us. Alright, so yes, we are going to have an optional fight against the air pirate Vigoro. Indeed, let's finish this. All right, so the Air Pirate Vigoro is definitely one of the strongest enemies in the game. Um, obviously, immense physical strength, and he's got a ton of hit points as well. So uh, this fight could go on for a little while, and someone might actually go down here. Uh, even with just a shield on everyone, this guy is quite a handful. Good news is you don't have to worry about spells, but I don't really know how much of a condolence that is once you see how strong this guy is. So we're going to focus up here a little bit first. Again, we don't need to worry about Delta Shield, so that helps. And we can just focus with everyone. And Enrique is going to be using Justice Shield every single turn this battle. So we're going to be using the uh, age-old strategy of just using Justice Shield and then trying to take this guy down with Pirate's Wrath. Uh, obviously, Vice is extremely strong, so he'll be doing... Uh, he should be hitting the 9999 cap. So, of course, this move we've seen before. Uh, we've noticed this in other times that we fought Vigoro. He uses Vigoro's charm, and it pretty much always confuses Aka. So there you go. Um, his regular attacks in this battle can actually cause confusion as well, even if it's not used on Aka. So that's where things can get a little bit of a pain, especially if Vice, or uh, even worse, Enrique gets confused and you don't have him available for the next turn, leaving you wide open. So that can cause a little bit of trouble anytime it happens. So now we have quite a lot of SP, but I'm actually going to uh, have Vice... Uh, actually, no, we are going to use a Pirate's Wrath here. Um, it's also worth uh, switching over to the Captain's Hat, I still have the white map on. There we go. So uh, Vigoro, I believe, is red, so we're going to be using purple on him. There we go. And uh, with Fina, I believe we're going to... Um, actually, I think she has it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're going to use Anchromis on everyone, basically just to increase everyone's defense. It's actually quite helpful. Uh, and Aka is still confused, and we actually... Oh, uh, we don't have enough... Oh, that, that's kind of a pain, actually. Do we have, like, an Anchromis? Probably not. No, is that, is that really... Oh, that's all the usable items we have. Okay. So, uh, we may just have to deal with uh, one less turn of Anchromis, but uh, that's fine. We'll just focus here, and, um... Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll cure Aka's confusion. Might as well. And a Justice Shield. All right, that turn took a little longer than I thought, but we were just, like, one SP short. That's too bad. So yeah, Aka really can't do any damage to any of us, so it doesn't matter. 
All right, so there's our first pirate trap. You can see he's not quite reaching the damage cap because he's not uh, encrypted up. But uh, here's the first of Vigoro Steel's random fire. I believe he did have this before, but it was nowhere near as damaging. You can see even with just a shield that took out about half of Enrique's HP. So without that, uh, without that there to actually guard him, he probably would have went down. And of course, Aka's confusion was already healed because he took damage, but whatever. Okay, I still actually don't believe I have enough to uh, use, so what we're going to do is we're just going to forego the Pirate's Wrath on this turn. We need to heal up a little anyway. So we're going to have Vice use Incremus, and we're going to have Aka use a Sacrum Crystal, we're going to have Fina use a Sacrum Crystal, and then uh, Enrique is going to get the Justice Shield up. Now, I'm pretty glad that she actually went before him, because if he would have used that skill again, both of those two actually would have been in quite a bit of trouble. So I'm glad we at least got one heal out of the way. And there's Cannon Fire, a skill that I do believe is exclusive to this form of Vigoro. And as you can see, that caused 4,000 damage on our strongest character, Halved. So, yeah, that, that's quite a lot. Uh, unguarded, that's gonna one-shot anybody, no matter what. Alright, so there, we finally got Anchromus out. I've been kind of waiting for that for a little while. This battle's gone a little bit slowly because of it. So we got a little heal. Vice could still use a little bit more, but he's tough. He'll be fine. So uh, we can go ahead and get off another Pirate's Wrath here. We'll do that. And uh, again, we're going to have these two heal with Sacrum Crystals. It might be a good idea to have someone dedicated to that uh, at any point in time, actually. You know, just to make sure that everyone's safe. Because Vigoro is pretty fast as well. So uh, he could very easily over uh, damage, your, damage you a little too much before you can react to it. Alright, so now that we have Incrim, we're doing our 9999 damage, which is good. So also make sure everyone's at top shape and also help Vice out a little bit. Right, so there's his regular attack, which isn't damaging in itself, uh, but like I said, can cause confusion. Thankfully, Fina avoided it. Uh, she has the Constitution gem equipped, which I think protects her from status elements, so uh, that would be a, a good reason why. Alright, so we don't have enough SP to uh, use both a Pirate's Wrath and a Justice Shield, so we're going to focus here. No one's really in too much danger, so I can use this turn to gather up quite a bit of SP. Oh, and this, is, this, this can be pretty bad if they're all clustered up. Yeah, I can see that hits just about everyone. The one thing I have noticed, though, is that that random fire tends to go after the fourth member. Uh, it could just be that it's programmed to kind of be targeted at the weakest member. So, um, that just happens to be Enrique in this case, since he's much lower lower level than the rest of us. So, uh, we can get off of Pirate's Wrath here, and we can also have everyone heal. Uh, this could be bad if he decides to use Random Fire again and everyone gets hit, because we'll all be at pretty low HP, but I think we will all survive. So I'm not too worried about it. And you can also tell Vigoro has a lot of health at this phase. It's going to take like five Pirate's Wraths to take him out. Alright, so yeah, this is kind of what I was worried about. But see, like I said, no one would go down from it. And we have two Sacrum Crystals on the way to heal up that much again. So it's not too bad. But like I said, though, this guy can be a handful, even if you're pretty much as overpowered as I am. So um, let's go ahead and get healed up here. That'll at least ensure that uh, multiple people survive on the next turn. If he uses cannon fire on someone, though, they could be in a world of hurt. So we may just have to deal with that if the uh, if that comes up. So again, let's get the healing out. Pretty much the same as last turn. That's good that that got out. That means at least uh, everyone will survive cannon fire. Alright, so he's getting down there. I think one more and that should probably take him out. Alright, it's actually somewhat unusual that we're getting our turns in before him. He's usually faster than that. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but well, I'm grateful for it at least, so... Alright, so we've got enough. Uh, I believe this Pirate's Wrath should finish it off, but I am, of course, still going to heal everyone and still put up Justice Shield. Oh, 
critical hit, zero. Yeah, she's got that uh, defensive aura, I think it's called, uh, that protects her from regular attacks. So, helped out there a little bit. Okay, so uh, assuming this is all it takes, let's get this last sack from Crystal out and then we'll watch the uh, final Pirate's Wrath of this playthrough. So there you go, that fight definitely requires a lot of strategy. I'd say Justice Shield is pretty much a must in that fight. I mean, otherwise, basically anyone could get one-shotted at any time. You also, as you can see, get a boatload of experience for that and a pretty good amount of gold as well. So, uh, pretty cool. We also get some mesh tights. All right, yeah, awesome. I love mesh tights. So, unfortunately, Vigoro's feeling a little down, of course. So he's changed his ways and he's decided to adopt our policy of no matter what happens, never give up. Of course, a pretty famous line spoken by Vice earlier. So he's not going to give up, he's going to become stronger, and next time we meet, he'll surely beat us. Well, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. at least he doesn't give up, that's for sure. And Vice, you know, kind of admires that in a way. He's like, you know, yeah, sure, whenever you're ready, you know, I'll be here. So I'm kind of with, uh, I'm kind of with Aka, though. He sure is persistent, and that would be an annoying thing to have to, like, fight him time and time again. <laughs> you know, with him getting stronger each time. But, you know, I guess you got to respect the guy's perseverance, and uh, he's going to leave us honorably come back again later so there we go and <laughs> yeah someday he's gonna get his own headquarters and fill it up with the most beautiful women from around the world yeah well i don't know i guess maybe with your new attitude and lease on life you might actually be appealing to somebody but <laughs> until then you know and you gotta prove it first i guess so there we go, that's Air Pirate Vigoro, and no, you cannot fight him over and over again. Try to go to Crescent Isle this time, you'll just go straight to the dog. So unfortunately, that's the last we'll see of him. And that's also the last that we're going to see of this game, as far as this playthrough is concerned. That takes care of the three secrets, as well as Elshin, the optional boss, and there's really not anything left to show you. So, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this LP. Again, I know it's been a little while, but uh, I said I was going to do this bonus part, and... It, may have taken me half a year but i did it so <laughs> there you go and it's pretty cool to check out these secrets especially since i bet a lot of people probably haven't seen them since like i said before the requirements are pretty lofty to actually get so there you go I'm glad i was able to show you guys this but uh, i'm out of things to do and out of things to say so i guess that's a sign that i should probably just leave it off here thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all later <laughs>